That's just the beginning of my nightmare. Then, in the interim of that, a new little critter appeared that looks like a min miniature pinchers in the kitchen, in the bedrooms, in the bathroom, crawling around. I have to kill them. I put them in a bag because I don't want to be accused of crazy and over-exaggerating and making things up that aren't there. And that is the perception that Dan Stone and the property management or, and the property manager, the maintenance people, and Dale make. Like, oh God, here she calls again. Let's see what this is about. I'm sure it's nothing. Just trying to waste our time. And in fact, I was right about the heater. And I requested reimbursement from the initial date that I reported issues with the heater because it had already been malfunctioning. My requests were denied. Dan Stone decided, because he's the property manager and he knows best as a licensed contractor, that me having no heat for nine days only was worth 15% of my daily rate for rent. So I was reimbursed a whole hundred dollars and some change. And what would you been reimbursed if you'd felt you'd been reimbursed fairly? Oh, fairly? I sh and I and I put this in an email to him. I should have been compensated from the initial date that I made the original report of the noise and the malfunction of the heater, and I would have been fine with fifteen percent of that. But from the time that there was no heat for those nine days, a full refund of those nine days at approximately $61 a day. That did not happen. And because I know how Danny is and I've dealt with him over the years and had to be moved because of mold infestation that they couldn't eradicate and movers damaging my stuff and leaving all the windows open and I could go on and on and we wrote, on. We wrote an article. We published an article about that. Yes. That I was not emotionally going to waste my energy and time arguing and fighting with him because as a clinician, as a human being, as an advocate, I know what my rights are and I know what falls under in unhabitable conditions. And so I let him do what he wanted to do and told him when the garage started leaking because he hired a contractor to replace the floor for my neighbors upstairs and that contractor didn't replace the hose of their washing machine back into the pipe. So the neighbors upstairs decide to wash a bunch of dirty laundry and don't realize while they're doing that that the water is going all over their floor and they claim that they left the apartment and that's how they didn't know. So all that filthy water went through their brand new floor that was just installed that day and seeped through the sheetrock all over my garage. It had flooded so bad that the water was going out the garage front door like 10, 12 feet from the one end of the garage to the other and just flowing down the driveway. And you had belongings in that garage? I had, I have antique tables in there. I have antique clocks. I have clothing. I have my books from childhood, from graduate school. Wet, damaged. I had to call the maintenance hotline. She sure told me he'd be over soon. Heard that before. And then uh, a Giorgiano or another maintenance guy showed up. I let him in the garage. He seemed baffled, asking me, well, where is the link? How long? I said, can you see the sheetrock? Can you see it bubbling? Can you see where the water is all over the place? Well, I got to wait for Shashir. I said, I am not, I have to go to work. I, the garage door, you lock the lock. Do what you guys need to do as maintenance people and let me know. Of course, they didn't. And all they did was go in there and throw, throw around, also a TV, a, a TV that works, flat screen, 40 inches, threw shit around, threw stuff around, and put in two large fans and locked the garage and left. And to this day, right now, on the 24th at 1.12 in the morning, those fans are still in my garage running. So, 
on that Monday, uh, that, that night, that Friday when they came out, the following day, either Saturday or that Friday, I wrote a detailed email to Dan Stone telling him the event that had happened and that I needed to be compensated $400 off April's rent. He wanted to come out and do a visual inspection for himself and brought along Charles Wong the next day. He wanted to argue with me about the damage to the three antique clocks. He told me that the clothing that had been damaged looked like it was worth $2,000, which it is. And he verified that the rocking chair did look like an antique that could be worth $5,000. He told me the antique tables, that I needed to get everything out of there. And I had specifically told him in that email, you better not tell me that you are not going to cut through that sheetrock and see if there's mold and mildew because it's damp, it's cold, it's black in that garage and I'm not going to deal with another mold and mildew issue like I did at my previous location and what I've dealt with here. And he reassured me that it would be taken care of. When he came into the apartment, because I took the antique clocks in there to clean them off, to try to reduce any further damage to them, he wanted to go back and forth with me about the damage to the clocks, about what their worth was. And I told him, you are not a clock expert. You know nothing about antiques. I will take it to an antique dealer. I will get him to put it in writing and I will charge you for his appraisal. I also, at the time, since I had Danny, had not seen him physically to deal with any of my maintenance issues for over a year, I wanted to point out to him the new refrigerator that, got, that I received in December, that the door wasn't closing correctly. I wanted to address the front windows in the living room that needed to be replaced because of the fog and condensation and salt water. I wanted to address that the bathtub plug took weeks to get and it's not the correct one. I wanted to address the new infestation of bugs. I wanted on and to talk to him again about the heat and he didn't like, like my tone me raising my voice he told me i'm not going to stand here and listen to you rant and rave at me and i responded then get out of my house he looked at me his face turned bright red and he said this isn't your house this is my house and as i walked him and charles to the door and charles with his head down you know worried looking for the front door again I said, I want the name, number, and spelling of your direct supervisor. And he gave it to me and then responded, so do you want me to move forward with having them to remove the sheetrock tomorrow? I said, yes, sir. Closed the door behind them, called his supervisor. She has never called me back. She sent me an email yesterday at 12.03 in the morning and basically said, what do you plan to do about the windows? Okay, so what do you think, finally, of Dan Stone's statement that this was not your house, it was his? It is one of the most outrageous, egregious, unprofessional, unethical, uncalled for, and completely a lie. No one physically owns those buildings. If you remember, they're all going to be torn down and it's going to be wetlands and estuary and Tida and the city and county of San Francisco has not paid off the next $500 million to outright own all of Treasure Island because the federal government, the Navy, hasn't finished doing their cleanup, cleanup. of all their toxic chemicals and stuff. Um, so... The reality is, he, as a property manager, owns nothing. He's lucky he's staying on, he got back onto YBI on the Coast Guard side. I'd like to know how that happened. How lucky. And I, at this point, after over seven years of my life being interrupted, hassled, to the point where I have anxiety attacks and nightmares and have been infected, affected by mold, mildew, bugs, and just such a disrespect and unprofessionalism.
that I don't deserve, nor does anyone else. And I'm sick of it. I have it with them. Okay. Okay. <laughs>